Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Quentage, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going into an archetype that you've most likely encountered already uh, in the past few weeks. The Elves. We're finally taking a look at the very powerful Elves archetype, uh, especially in this month, since there have been a few uh, small buffs that made this deck suddenly very, very powerful. I didn't go for the very classic um, net deck, because I've also gone into Guerrilla Tactics, and we're adding Milva to the pile to be as oppressive to engine decks as possible. For once, I'm gonna join them because I can't beat them. And holy hell, this deck is powerful. The games I've played so far, I think I went 15-2 uh, so far. So uh, it is really, really strong, especially against Northern Realms. Northern Realms can't do anything. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's head into the deck building and take a look at the hit and run deck. So, as I said, Hit and Run is a guerrilla tactics deck that uses both Madoc and Milva Sharpshooter. If you're familiar with the rest of the Elves deck these days, then you'll recognize most of these cards. There might be some slight alterations here and there to what you're used to, but it is mostly the same. So the cards that have been buffed are, of course, the Dolblatana Archer, uh, where you actually gain an Elven Deadeye if you kill something with her ability, or even two if you kill something with her ranged ability where you damage two enemy units by one. We'll talk about her more deeply in a minute. But other than that, we have Vanadane, we have of course Waylay, which has been uh, changed as well to always spawn an Elven Deadeye, not just on that blow, uh, making it just, it's just so consistent in uh, points that you're getting from this card. Um, then of course Alyssa Hansen to put some waylays back into our deck. The uh, scenario card, Oneromancy for consistency and then Simnas to put all those waylays back onto the board. Um, that's basically a very quick overview of what this deck does. We're going to go into each and every single card as usual. But as always, if you're not interested in that, you can skip to the example matches using the timeline down below. And also down below, even lower than that, you'll find the link to the Blake Gwent website that uh, links to this deck and you can import it in your own game and work from there. But since you're still here, I'm uh, going to assume that you're interested in every single card that is in this deck. Let's start with the Elven Sword Master 4 Power for four provisions has an order ability when she is on the melee row where she damages an enemy unit by one. Standard the cooldown is two turns but if you play an elf you decrease that cooldown by one so ideally you could play this card uh, damage an enemy unit every single turn as long as you play elves. Very handy to get uh, that one bit of damage that you usually are missing to kill something completely. Uh, but more on that in a minute. Then uh, a single Dolblatana Bowman, 4 power for 4 provisions, and on deploy damage an enemy unit by 1 for each row that separates it from this unit. So if you're on the range row and you're the, the unit that you're targeting is also on the range row, you deal 3 damage because there's 3 rows between you two. If you're both on the front row, this card will only do 1 damage. So it depends on that. Bowmen always go for range, of course, or bow women in this case. Then we have a Vryhead Sapper, just a purify option for four provisions um, if you have an elf you can purify any unit otherwise you can only purify one of your own units but still very handy card then double making a bomb making a bomb is very handy to get the, our two special cards out of the deck so both Madoc and Milva uh, so you move an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding for four turns if it is the only unit on that row you damage it by four instead which is what we're always going to try and go for making this card um, well, make, this card makes you able to kill a 6 power unit in one go with Milva combined. Um, otherwise, you can also use your leader ability to kill something of 4 power, but we'll talk about that later on. Now we have Red Haze, which is our tall removal card. You, It's also a bomb, so Mado comes out of the deck. Uh, where you choose an enemy unit and then damage one adjacent enemy unit by its power. Very situational, but can very, very well work out if your opponent doesn't think about it. Because uh, this card, yeah, of course, does require uh, two big units right next to each other. You could move if there's like two big units, but there's one unit in between. You could move that card away with your leader ability and then use Red Haze which is uh, definitely another option. Then Dancing Star, good for these swarms that we might be facing, another bomb where we damage an enemy unit by three, but if you kill that unit, you damage the unit to the right by one less. 
If you kill that unit with the two damage, you do uh, one damage to the unit on their right. So that just keeps going a little bit. And then of course, Waylay, a special card, a tactic card for four provisions where you damage an enemy unit by three and then spawn an Elven Deadeye on a random road. That blow is no longer required, so this card, if you hit something that is not armored or shielded uh, and is at least three power, you always do six points, which is really, really good, especially in the amount of uh, times that we're going to play this card in this deck. Then Dimeridium Bombs, very simple, damage unit by 4 and give it Veil, and of course we also get Madok out of the deck or Graveyard with this. Then the Dolblatana Archer, 2 power uh, for 5 provisions, so she has seen a change. If you put it on the melee row, she still damages an enemy unit by 3, if you put it on the range row, you damage 2 enemy units by 1, so I think that's mainly the same ability still, but on that blow, you spawn an Elven Deadeye in this row. That triggers per ability, so if you kill two enemy units with that one damage on the range row, you actually spawn two Elven Deadeyes, making the possible maximum with this card 10 points, which is a lot for the 5 provision card. And of course, more Elven Deadeyes means more synergy with your other Elf cards. Then Double Bountiful Harvest is basically a backup for Simlos and also allows you to put some engine type cards on the board if you don't have any targets, because that sometimes happens. Uh, Bountiful Harvest you create and play a Bronze Square Tail Elf, so it's going to be a random selection of Elves. And then depending on the position of the chosen unit, you boost a card in your hand by two. Yeah, we're just going to be using this as like a filler card. Uh, I think the biggest uh, thing that you could do with this deck to change it is getting rid of these two cards and pick something else. There's definitely other options for this slot. Then Alyssa Hansen. Alyssa Hansen is one of the only neutral cards in this deck, but 6 power for 7 provisions, where you are allowed to shuffle a special card from your graveyard back into your deck. Uh, if it was a bronze card, you shuffle another copy of that special also into your deck, but that means you do need to have two of the same bronzes in your graveyard already for this to work. Why are we going to use this card? We're going to be using that card on the waylays that we spawn with the Scenario card and Valadane. Valadane will be seeing that in a minute. The reason why we do that is because those are the extra waylays, uh, not the two that are already in the deck. If you put two of those back into the deck, you can get up to five waylays with sim loss by the end of the match. And then of course Vanadane, the card that we needed to really talk about, so has been very interesting from the start, but because of the uh, way that waylay worked and you needed to kill something, it wasn't always worth it. Now. Um, Vanadane is actually definitely worth it. So 6 power for 7 provisions and on the ploy you move up to 2 cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck. This could also be a good way to get rid of a Madok or a Milva in your hand that you didn't really want. And then you add Waylay to your hand for each card moved that way, so you gain 2 extra Waylays. On top of that, uh, Vanadane also has a passive ability where whenever you play a Waylay you spawn another Elven Deadeye on his row. So Waylay spawns an Elven Deadeye on a random row, Vanadane always does that on his row on top of that. So every Waylay and Vanadane is on the board, does 9 points. Next up is Elrin, basically a thinning card where uh, she has 5 power for 8 provisions, but at the end of your turn if you control 5 or more Elves, you summon this card automatically to your melee row. So uh, just very handy, extra 5 points that you get for free especially in this deck. Then Isengrim Voltiagna is a very good uh, supporter for the swarms that we're going to be generating. 6 power for 8 provisions and on deploy you boost all other allied elf units by 1. So not all units but all elves and whenever you play an elf afterwards he will boost himself by 1 to uh, yeah, kind of counterbalance um, what happens if you play him a bit too early. And now we have Milva. Milva is the card that I need to explain a little bit further. So Milva needs to stay in your deck. She has 2 power for 10 provisions, but that's not important. Uh, but on order, you damage an enemy unit by 1. If you kill something with that 1 damage, you shuffle her back into your deck. And while she is in the deck, whenever you move an enemy unit, she will summon herself from the deck. So she will jump out, shoot that target with 1 damage, and um, just sit there. The preferred way of dealing with her, of course, is then kill something with that order ability. Because she moves back into the deck for the next move that you'll be doing. If you play this card right, this just allows you to have two extra points on every single move that you do. And of course, be very oppressive against engine uh, cards that 
stay at a pretty low level. So with making a bomb, you can kill something up to six. With Guerrilla Tactics or Leader Ability, you can kill something up to five. And with the Elven Swordmasters, you can go even up to seven or just anything in between because you can use the Elven Swordmaster to put something from five to four first, then move it and then kill it with Milva. So that's usually what we're going to be trying to do, especially against Northern Realms. Again, this deck just excels against that. And then a rather fancy card in that regard is Madoc, 3 power for 10 provisions and whenever you play a bomb card you summon this card from your deck or graveyard to a random allied row. Milva does not come from the graveyard, remember that, but Madoc does. And on order you spawn a Cataclysm for one turn on the opposite row where you damage 3 units by 1 or just spread out 3 damage on the, the, that row. And then he destroys himself, so you can kill him yourself. Um, very easily. So basically a more structured um, Milva in that way, aside from the fact that he doesn't do any extra damage. Now we have Vernossial, of course Vernossial needs to be in this Elven deck as well. 5 power for 11 provisions and on deploy, if you put her on the melee row, you will damage a random enemy unit by 2 for each and every single Elven Dada you have on your side of the board, so it could be a lot in this deck. And if you put it on the range row, you spawn two Elven Deadeyes in this row, just giving you 11 points. Um, there will be situations where you put it on the range row and other ones where you put it on the melee row. It just depends on the situation, whether there still is enough things to uh, damage, whether you still have enough Elven Deadeyes, and so on. Uh, if you see that you won't be getting at least 6 points in damage with the melee ability, then you definitely just need to go for the ranged ability. It just makes a lot more sense. Then Simlas, um, very, very powerful in this deck. If you play your waylays correctly, put them all back into the deck, Simlas is 30 uh, points. Uh, I did calculate this before. So it's 32 points. So if you have 5 waylays in the deck, each and every single waylay does six points, so that's 30 points, and then Simlas is also a two. So Simlas just allows you to play all copies of a bronze special card from your deck. Um, there are a few backups for this, so again, as I said, the Bountiful Harvests are a backup for this, and making a bomb is also a double in this deck, so that would be a good option as well. Then on Iremancy for consistency, so play any card from your deck, and in the next round you get that card back. Um, so just very good consistency card. And then, of course, a scenario card where we uh, yeah, feign that for 14 provisions. We start with a Venossial's Commander, which is a card that boosts yourself by one at the end of every single one of your turn. If you only control Elf units, unless you also control Venossial, in that case, she just does it regardless. Then, if you play another Elf, you spawn two Elven Dead Eyes in the row. And then, that final chapter is very important you play Waylay. So, that is your fifth Waylay if you've been counting. So, two in the deck, two from Vanadein and one from this scenario. Very powerful, and it's one of the only scenarios that we're gonna be playing in the first round, just to get that waylay as soon as possible. And then of course our stratagem is gonna be the end shade Saber, where we spawn and play a Squiretail Neophyte, which is a two power unit that also spawns a base copy of himself on the other row. So starting at four, but he has an order ability where he transforms an allied elf into an elf and dead eye, possibly giving you two more points per transformation. Uh, if it's a very damaged elf that is only at one power anymore. Um, but other than that, it's just going to be an extra point, so six to eight points that you get from that card. But the most important part about that is that you can actually play another elf within the same turn. So, for example, if you have an elven swordmaster on the board um, and you damage something with the ability, you play an elf from hand, you could also play another elf through this and get that one damage tick again in the same turn. Even more interesting is using it with the scenario cards. If you play the scenario and then use your stratagem, you are already at the final step of the scenario um, without even having to uh, go into the next turn or anything. So very, very good card. And then Guerrilla Tactics, move a unit to the other row if it's an enemy damage it by two, if it's an ally boosted by two, and we have three charges of that. Again, if you use this, Milva will come out, so you can kill something of five since Milva damages it by one when she comes out and then with the order ability you can kill it and that is it for all the cards so without further ado let's just head straight into those example matches to see how juicy this deck really is and our first match is against northern realms so uh, i'll be able to just show this off really really well here how powerful this deck is against especially even even stockpile uh, we're just going to be killing all of those cards uh, as quickly as possible um, 
because that's how oppressive we're going to be. So, Elrin always needs to go, and then of course Milva and Madok all will also need to go. But since we have Vanadin, we have a little bit of um, leeway. I could get... I don't really need Red Haze in this case, I think. I have enough other options, and a Madok, and we get Simla. So that's a really good starting hand. Um, the only thing that we're really missing is a Swordmaster. And the two gold cards that we don't have are Vernosiel and Alyssa Hansen. I'm gonna take a chance and just go with an Elven Swordmaster already. Because um, the Swordmaster is actually pretty important to get your damages up fully. Because now whatever our opponent throws at us, I will be able to kill it in one go. And that is very important against an engine deck like this. We get Bombardment immediately, so the Swordmaster does die. And then that means I'm just going to play the Scenario card. I need to get that Waylay um, out as quickly as possible. Um, so we can do this. And then as I said, we can use the Unshade Saber to immediately trigger the next part of the Scenario card. And that is just really, really oppressive against a deck like Northern Realms. A stockpile deck. Then we get Amphibious Assault. That's probably going to go into a Ballista, I would think. There we go. The standard play into a Ballista. If that goes in the front, that's actually not a good choice, my man. Because um, we can hit it for three. Although, yeah, it is okay, I guess. Uh, I can't kill it immediately. But uh, Vanadain goes on the board. He allows me to choose two cards that I can get rid of. I'm going to get rid of Bountiful Harvest and Dancing Star. There we go. And then I can use Waylay on the Reinforced Ballista, putting it up to five. So five right now, if I had the Swordmaster, I could tap it with the Swordmaster, then move it with the Leader Ability and kill it with Milva. That's not an option right now, so let's just pass, because I'm assuming our opponent is going to pass as well. So that's one hit on Vanadain. I'm gonna yeah, assume that there's gonna be a boiling oil there. Fair enough, I guess. They could reduce the cooldown with the Siege Master, and they don't. I'm gonna try my luck with the uh, Dimeridium Bomb. Because if Madog jumps on the front row, he does go to the back row. Yeah, I'm just gonna use one of my leader ability charges here. Although I don't really need to. I really don't need to. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I could have used the Dancing Star this time, but I'm not going to do it. Because I'm assuming our opponent is going to pulse anyway. They are not. King Hanselt, probably into... Ooh, Voltest Sprite. So Voltest Sprite is interesting. I can actually kill Voltest Sprite. Um, and we get another charge there. Yeah, well, that was very aggressive. And they are almost at equal points there, but they did waste... Oh, they're going to waste... Are oh, they going to waste two more leader charges? So I can kill um, Voltest Pride like this. And I'm not even going to kill it with Milva. I'm going to kill the Ballista with Milva and then use Madok to kill Voltest Pride in the back there. Like that. And that just gives me the one point advantage that I really needed. And then we get the Caraballista... Yeah, I'm going to waylay uh, King Hanselt, and then I can kill him with um, Milva. There we go. I'm going to get rid of it as many um, engine capabilities there as possible. And then we get Radovit. I can actually kill Radovit, which is good. Although I don't really want to use that last waylay, because I have two waylays in the graveyard right now. Yeah, I don't want to give them that extra charge of carryover. So I think I'm going to use both of my leader ability charges on... It is risky though. On Radovid, because it is an extra charge. And I think most of their, their um, abilities are going to be gone then. So like this, and then kill Radovid with Milva. Um, and then I can do Dolblatana Archer on the front row here. Still giving us 7 points, which is fine. And then we get the Siege Tower. And I think I might even use... No, well, I'm gonna keep Isengrim as is. We get... Are they gonna use that twice? They are, they're gonna just spend their leader ability. Okay. Then they don't give me any choice, I need to push further. 
Interesting. Uh, so I'm going to put Isengrim down now. If I can. Please. Ah, there we go. The game didn't react for me there. So that's 11 points. So I think that should... Be. Do both of these have resupply? No, only the Garbalista has resupply. And that's Koyati on that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Koyati is gone now. Um, that's weird that they didn't use Koyati on the... Um, although they, it wasn't really effective since I used the, the second step already. So that's also a good deterrent. Um, Koyati shouldn't really destroy Fane Death at that point because you're already at the second step. So the only thing that they're blocking is the... Um, the last part to so the waylay, but the waylay is what's important to us. So the most important thing that we have right now is, of course, we need to get rid of those uh, waylays. There we go. And we got Pernal Seal. That's also really good. Um, which means that the only card we need to get from our deck is Alyssa Henson. Oh, and our opponent is really going to push this. Okay. So that's a Ballista. Um, I'm going to do making a bomb. I know I won't be able to get Milva away that quickly, but it's not what I really want to do here either. I just want to get the Ballista down as much as possible. Because um, I don't have any other ways to actually trigger Milva either way. So it doesn't really matter. So that's a hit on Milva. And next up, I can use the uh, the Dolblatana Archer to actually kill the Ballista. Because I need to keep Simlas. Definitely need to keep Simlas. And there we get the winch, sadly. Ah, uh, that's actually not that bad. I'm gonna have to be careful here, because I can't kill anything now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use Vernosiel first. Uh, so this is gonna be two points regardless, so I am gonna be ahead. Okay. It's the Carabalista. Oh boy. Okay, it's gonna have to be Alyssa Hansen here. Uh, put the Waylays back into the deck. But now I don't have anything to kill, and if that is another bombardment. That's a hit, that's a hit, so that's equal points. Oh, we get the War Chariot. Yeah, I'm gonna be forced to play Simlos. Because I can't, uh, the only thing that I can do is 5. Uh, I should have played, even Dancing Star would have probably been better, but yeah. Let's just uh, Simlos this. Um, so yeah, at least you can see it, what happens. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There we go. We were forced to do it early. Um, we still have a one card advantage and no leader ability charges on either side. Uh, this is going to take a while to play out on our opponent's side because that's, that's five cards that is hitting. Um, but that was really well played from our opponent, kind of forcing our hands a little bit. Uh, we don't have a lot of cards left. There are no cards that I'm going to get now that I don't want to use. So that at least is something. Um, but they're all going to be pretty low level. Uh, so I can purify. The Elven Swordmaster is not going to be useful. But we risk getting even worse cards here. Let's get rid of the Elven Swordmaster. I'll keep it as... Although I, need, I really need another bomb. I'll get rid of the Elven Swordmaster. We get Red Haze. Okay. Oh boy. Um, Bountiful Harvest into Sorceress of Dolblatana. If that does not get hit with anything, but I don't believe it will not get hit with anything. Ooh, frick me. The red haze was really bad. I shouldn't have re-pulled that. I'm gonna have to uh, toss red haze here. And then we get the Centrian Envoy. That is fine. I think I might just pull it out here. So I can hit that. It is not Amphibious Assault. We've seen that twice already. It might be a Defender or something. Defender would actually... Yeah, Defender would win them the game. It is John Natalis into Reinforcements, I assume? No. Okay, but that doesn't matter. Okay. Whew. That was really close. <laughs> Way too close. 
That was, yeah, they played that really well. If we didn't have the one card advantage here, we would have lost. Um, but right now, I can just put it on the melee row, kill the Sentry and Envoy, and get another card out. Oh boy. Yeah, that was really, really, really bad of my, of, of my, just my draws in the, the final one, the Red Haze. I, I basically had no, no card advantage anymore, so, but that was really, really close. And we face a Simulate. Simulate should also work. Um, as long as I don't use Angoulême. Angoulême might actually hurt a little bit. We have our mulligans laid out for us, so Milva needs to go, Maddox needs to go. And for the rest, this seems to be pretty good. I don't want to risk now pulling Aleron, because she can go first. So let's finish redrawing and start out with the Elven Swordmaster, which is usually my starting play, but we haven't seen a lot of them in the past few matches. So, Elven Swordmaster first, giving us a little bit of an engine on the board. And then we get Tourney Joust immediately. Fine, fine. That means that I really need to push with... I could put another Elven Swordmaster down while we're at it. Doesn't really matter, I think. To get them rid of our hand as quickly as possible. They're four provision cards, so again, three cards. If our opponent is really scared of those, then we should uh, just take advantage of that. Then we get the Blightmaker. Um, I can't. I don't have a Blatana no Archer, but I do have a lot of gold cards in my hand. So the only card I'm really missing is Alyssa this time. So I have a practically perfect hand. I could do Dimeridium Bomb, and then just hit the Mage Assassin by one. And that is okay. Absolutely okay. I'm still ahead. And we get for card. For card is gonna probably ooh, coup de grace. Coup de grace, my elven sword master. Um so what I'm gonna do is although red haze I'll be able to use that later on. I'm gonna use the uh the scenario card here. So let's just use Feign Death. Use the Saber and put the Neophyte down and then I can tap Madok. Do I kill that Elven Swordmaster? I don't think I need to just yet. I'm gonna save my leader ability charges for now. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, if we only had a Dol Blatana Archer now, that would be very nice. So now they're gonna go for Venosil's Commando. It's the most dangerous card on the board at the moment. You get Jan Calvate. Okay. By the way, I need to toss a card that I really don't want to toss. Move up to two cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck. So the bottom of my deck is going to be <laughs> very low at the moment. Um, I'm going to use Van Adeen regardless. Um, I don't even need to kill anything. Uh, so Van Adeen. And I'm going to have to kick Red Haze and... Simlas then. Yeah, I wanna Yeah, I'm gonna put Simlas at the bottom so he doesn't get um Cantarella or anything like that. So that's gonna be on the Elven Swordmaster. And that just gives us a lot of points. Probably enough for a pass. Maybe muzzle on Vanadane. No. No, they don't wanna use muzzle on Vanadane. I'm gonna play do I play another Waylay now? Probably best. So I can set up my hand as much as possible in the next rounds. Um, just to set up that combo. So now I have two waylays in my graveyard. And I need to play Alyssa. Simlas is at the bottom of the deck. So I need to get Alyssa in hand. That's the most important thing. And I really don't want to have <laughs> Milva in my hand. So Milva needs to go and the waylay needs to go. We get crap. I need both Alyssa and Simnos for this, so this might have not been the best. I should have put Isengrim at the bottom of the deck. I do, do need to pass. There's no other option than to pass. I know I'm not going to get Simnos, since I put him at the very bottom. Not the greatest plan there, but still. Mushy Ruffle for carryover, that makes sense. Illusionist probably going for the Swordmaster. So we're going to see a bunch of Swordmasters later on. I could purify, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I just need to see Alyssa now. Again, making a bomb. Dancing star. And Alyssa. Okay. Now I need to be very careful with my mulligans. Um, I don't need to purify. And I'm going to stop it there. 
I don't want to grab any extra waylays. I don't want to grab Milva. So this is going to have to do. So finish redrawing. Opponent is hesitating what they want to play first. Remember, they, I don't think they've seen um, Milva just yet. So I'm going to play this slow and just start with Alyssa. I need to do that anyway. So let's put the waylays back in the deck. And start from there. There's a nice juicy three-point card over there, so if something goes next to that, I can start doing Dancing Star. There's all those options as well, so plenty of things to do. We get the Mage Torturer. I'm gonna use Bountiful Harvest first. I could try and hit the Mage Torturer there, but it's not really worth it at the moment. No, Bountiful Harvest. If you get something that does damage an enemy unit by three, if it's the only unit on its row, which is not the case right now. Yeah, let's do the Elven Scribe then, it's the only good option here. So after three special cards, uh, that card is going to go up to ten, so boost himself by six. And then Bratons, but Bratons we can take out, I'm not scared of Bratons. And even the Elven Scribe, we can take care of that. Uh, but we do need to start... Oh boy. Okay, that was aggressive. And I did of course toss my Red Haze. Those are engines that I can't really take out anymore, can I? Um, I could do the Dolblatana Bowman from here. Yeah, let's just do that. Hit that Elven Scribe over there. I could even push for Simnos now afterwards, uh, but for now it's not necessary just yet. I think they're trying to bait out Simnos and I don't really need to. I can now hit um, the Scribe with Dancing Star. Which is what I wanted to do, and that's gonna be three hits. Yeah, three damage hit on the Elven Scribe or not? I mean, the Elven Scribe is gonna do his work regardless. Uh, so, Dancing Star on the Elven Scribe. And then we get Maddock in return. There's no real older engine that I need to take out at this point. I don't want to overswarm too quickly because our opponent has a lot of options to put units on our side of the board. And there we get Joachim. Oh, I really am regretting not having Red Haze on the board now. And there we have the Tenet Turncoats, putting them up to 44. That's a lot of points, isn't it? If they want to slam that card down. I think they're just hesitating which card to give the, uh, the Spying Tag. I think I really need to go for Simnos now. It's gonna upgrade my Elven Scribe, but it does add a lot of units on my side of the board. Uh, I also need to think about making a bomb, but I'll need a little bit more time before that. Let's do Oneromancy into Simlos. And Simlos is gonna do a lot of damage. So Waylays, um, one, two, three, four and five and that means i can now kill bratens with milva as well and that's two engines at least down two assimilate engines gone and that's two more units up to three so that's also a good target for anything else but i think next up needs to be making a bomb and i'm gonna actually put that on Ooh. okay And we get Vermosiel, of course. They got really lucky with that. Um, I'm gonna move the Elven Scribe with Milva. I'm not gonna use Milva just yet. Now I'm gonna use making a bomb on Thea Nova, which adds some bleeding, and then I'm gonna kill the Elven Scribe just to avoid breaking Milva. But that is about equal now. This is going to be really tight. And we get good across on Simlas, which is probably going to be double ambas ambassador. I'm assuming. Emissary? What's it called? Yeah, Imperial Diplomacy, that one. So that's going to trigger Assimilate twice, but of course I did take care of most of the Assimilate engines. And I'll be able to kill the final one as well. Vernosil's Commando is actually good, because Vernosil's Commando is going to go up to four. And that is going to always pick up by one because of the fact that Vernal Seal is there. And then Grand Canal. 
Not bad, not bad at all. I am going to take out the uh, commando because that's just going to add more points. I just deny so many points by doing that. Um, then, use Madoc and start ticking on the Dolblatana archers. Yeah, like this. Um, bam. Okay. We are losing a little bit, but we do have a one power unit now. We get bribery. Bribery is going to be, could be another Vuno sale. That would really, oh, for fuck's sake. That card really needs to get nerfed somehow, because it goes for, for gold so often. Okay, so that's good. They're actually making space for me. I could add another archer. Because technically the, um, oh boy, if I do that, I'm actually filling the row. I could do Vernosil now, uh, or Isengrim, ah, oh, Isengrim first. That just gives me one point, one point ahead. It's probably going to be a Yennefer Invocation in there, there it is. So that's 11 points. Uh, that does give me a little bit more space over here, so I can kill this. That's equal points, equal points. So either they kill one of the Elven Deadeyes now, they're going to go for the list time we get Coyote on this and give me yeah, it's, it's over. It's over. I'm just going to even use the flashy ability. So there we go. A boom, 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 boom. Ah, one, one useless hit. But there we go. 13 points ahead against Assimilate. Silent Assassins indeed. So just two matches this time, um, just because of the fact that it just shows it off rather nicely. Um, you play well against Northern Realms, you play well against Syndicate, you play well against um, um, Nilfgaard as we saw, usually against monsters as well. Of course they have a lot of higher power units, but most of the time you can actually pull out. The only, of course, downside would be if you face a mayor. Um, the Dead Eye Ambush is slightly more effective than this deck is if you're playing against each other. Uh, it's only a few points, so it's really close to the wire depending on how you play this. Uh, you should probably not play your scenario card in the first round if you're playing against that deck, even though it probably has Coyote Heatwave in that case. It also depends on whether you start or not, uh, so it's a really tough matchup that way. But most other matchups you should be winning. Um, so yeah. Hit and run. So it has been a while since I did Squiretail, but I really, really enjoyed this deck. Hopefully you guys did as well. You, as always, you can check out the deck itself in the description of this video. Don't forget to leave a like uh, on the deck itself and on this video, because uh, all support is really appreciated as always. And if you have any suggestions as to how to, to make this deck a little bit better, you can also put them in the comment section down below, because that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out. So thanks again, and obviously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Dutch. Goodbye and stay nutty.